Hey guys, welcome back to the live stream tonight. We're talking about Friedman seating or the flip and fold van seating. So behind me on, let's see over here, this is the uh, flip and fold seat that I purchased uh, at an expo. Um, and I'm going to be using it in the van behind me. But before I actually finish installing it, um, doing the floor and stuff like that, I wanted to go ahead and make this stream, see if you guys had any questions on the seating as I'm kind of going step by step. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about the seat, uh, where to find a, a seat like this. Um, so I got a couple links. There's different kinds. I'm even going to talk about the non flip and fold seat. So it's a permanent seat that gets mounted in your van. Uh, however, it's one that's not factory. So if you're looking for a rear seat, but you don't want to do the factory mounts and stuff like that, you want to have a different solution. We'll talk about that tonight. And then we'll talk a little bit about um, other components as far as uh, how to locate it in your van, um, where I'm locating it, why, and look at a little bit of the uh, fitment uh, challenges that I had as far as putting it in the van because if you guys are thinking about building a van and you've sketched everything out on paper, you'll understand that it can't be too close to the wall. It can't be too forward to the driver's seat. It can't be too far back. You know, is it going to flip down? Um, can you walk past it when it's in its folded down position? All kinds of stuff like that. So if that interests you, that's what we're going to be talking about on this live stream. Uh, so let's go ahead and hop on over to our little presentation. There we go. Um, so we're specifically talking about the Friedman seating, uh, company or Friedman, the seat right here on the right, uh, no affiliation with this company. Again, this is just some nice, easy information for you guys. If you're thinking about doing a DIY van build and you want to, uh, have some quick links and a little bit of my, you know, experience with this type of stuff. So let me move this over here. So again, we're going to be talking about. Uh, Freeman seating, the three point fold away seat. So they actually, these actually have three point harnesses in them. So it's not just the lap belt. And then we have, um, the link will go over, uh, we'll do other companies. So suburban seating and safety also carries this, uh, something that I'll mention just cause it comes top of mind right now. But, um, I called up the, the company cause I wanted to get a different seat. So I bought this at an expo uh, at a substantial discount. That's why I got this seat because I was like, wow, that's, you know, uh, almost half price. However, the layout of the van originally uh, was not going to allow this seat to work because this seat folds, it folds towards the driver's seat. Um, I wanted a seat that folded towards the passenger seat so that I could put the kitchen galley in the back, not the front where it's most typical. Um, I actually have a kitchen galley 8020 kit that I bought and I was going to use that for this build, but now it's, everything's changed up <laughs> kind of because of the seat. Um, it's kind of a good thing because the layout that I've switched over on the spec build is more typical of the kitchen, uh, by the opening of the door. So you can use the sink or hose stuff off. Um, the seat's more inset, and then behind the seat, we'll have uh, another little kitchenette. I mean, not kitchenette, a uh, kitchen galley, a small one. Um, I'll talk about that. And, yeah. So, it kind of changed up the layout, which is okay. But, right now, uh, the reason I'm having to stay with this one is... Uh, the last quarter of this year is the first time that they will have, according to my sources, these flip and fold style seats back in stock. So right now, they're sold out to the very end of the year. So I'm not, I want this in this layout. And I, I don't want to wait for <laughs> the end of the year to get the van done. I need it done in like the next two months. So, um, so he referred me my contact at Friedman referred me to suburban seating and safety and said, Hey, if you want that instead of a flipping to the driver's side, if you wanted the flipping to the passenger side, check out suburban seating and safety. Maybe they have some left in stock. 
So I'll show you that website. Next, we have Titan DIY Kits. That is Titan Vans DIY Kit website. Um, they also have... Uh, I don't believe they carry inventory. Everything is, you know, Shopify right now. So what they show... Uh, so actually, ten Titan DIY Kits is what made me email Friedman to ask him about the lead times. So while I'm on that stream of thought, let me just show you what I'm talking about. So if you go to Foldaway Bench Seat and you go to their website, uh, down here it says features, but check this out. All the way down here, uh, shipping and freight. It says processing times, processing time is 10 weeks, 10 plus weeks, plus one to five days. And I was like, 10 weeks. And so I questioned that. And when I did, I contacted uh, my contact at Friedman. And he said, yep, absolutely. Uh, we're out of seats or that style of seat until the end of the year. Um, so if you can find one and you're doing a build this summer, go ahead, I'd say, and snatch it up. Because according to what I've been told, those seats are... Um, Uh, out of stock for the moment. All right, next thing we'll talk about are the non-flip and fold seats. So there's a company called Wilderness Vans. We'll talk about that. And then over here on the right-hand side, I've got two photos. This top one is the seat mounted in the van. Obviously, it's out and on the floor over here. And then we'll talk about the mounting plate at the bottom. All right. So let me get back here. And if you guys have any questions, uh, we're pretty much going over van seating today. So you can kind of pick my brain as far as stuff that I've seen at trade shows or well, just my what I've researched myself as I've been trying to figure out uh, the best way to put a seat in. And it has primarily more to do with safety than anything else. Um, so we will take a look at that. If you guys haven't already, uh, we have our new DIY van build cheat sheet that I've put together. So go ahead and hop on over to vanbuilderhq.com. You can download the free cheat sheet. Uh, so what's really awesome about this cheat sheet, um, I'll talk about it later in the video, but this cheat sheet is essentially all the products that I've purchased over the last three years directly through Amazon. So these are tools that I had to have to get a job done, uh, last minute items, um, anything from bolts, nuts, and screws to wire crimping, uh, PEX fittings. Um, if it was available on Amazon and I needed it in the shop, it's on this list. And by purchasing all this stuff over the last couple of years, it's really identified stuff that I use very frequently, such as fuse, fuses, uh, fuse blocks, um, stuff like that. So if you guys click, come on over here, download the free cheat sheet. All you got to do is click on the link, put your name and email address, and it's going to be in a, uh, like a Google Doc, Excel type format. Um, what's nice about that is you're going to be able to look through and sort through things quickly. So if you have hardware you want to look through, like bolts, nuts, and screws that I use, if you want to go directly to electrical, so that has to do with uh, fuses, stuff like that. It even has all the solar items Itemized. So if you go to solar, you're going to have MPPT controllers. You're going to have uh, the solar, the fittings and plugs, uh, like the adapter kits, solar panels. Um, typically, it's going to be Renogy products, but um, it's over 240 items that are going to be on that list. Uh, very curated and organized, and I think it'll really help you get a jump start to your DIY builds. So you're going to have to scour the internet and wonder, you know. What's something that Nick would buy? <laughs> it's in the list. So uh, sign up for it. Put your name, email address, click download now. It'll be sent directly to your inbox. I really think it'll help you out. So let me hop on over to, and let's see why we're over here. Let me, I'll put the link in the description. It's already in the description. I'm going to go ahead and just put it in the chat. So you guys can just uh, can click on it and sign up. 
All right. Oh, and if I didn't miss, if I didn't mention this in that little spiel here, so this form, the 250 items, they're all Amazon. So they'll have Amazon links direct that you can click on and go takes you directly through Amazon through the document. So you don't have to cut and paste and all that good stuff. All right. So next I'm going to pull up the video that I had planned for today. Let's see if I can find it. All right. So we have... I'm going to go to this video. All right. You guys are going to have to pardon the low light <laughs> situation. Um, I was kind of quickly documenting this. We talked about these yesterday in our last live stream, the ABC rig um, paper templates that you can use to lay out your floor. Uh, so we talked about that yesterday, and then I'm just going to fast forward here and get to the seat. Um, here we go. So this is the seat in the van. And I know it's pretty dark in this video, but just bear with me. Um, we're just kind of talking over the overall concepts and where to get the seat today. So the video on how it's being bolted in, I'm going to do that later. Uh, but this is the seat right here. Let's see if I can, if I move up here in the video, there we go. Uh, so we have our seat, and what's really cool about this seat is it it does what it says. It's a flip and fold seat. So in this image right here, you can see the seat is opened up and folded down. And then over here behind me, the seat is folded up. So when the seat's folded up, it's out of your way. You can walk past the seat, get to your bed, and you have a ton, you have a lot more room uh, and access in the in the van. Something that's really cool about this seat is if you look right here, there is a little clip. And that clip holds a stand-up table. It's I didn't it was pretty wild. He pulled out the table, which is on the back. Check this out. So on the back of this seat, you have a table. Look at that. It's really awesome. So you got this table. Um, I believe you can get it in different colors. The one I bought just happened to be in white. Um, so here's the table. And then as you have the seat folded up, you have extra storage. I mean, extra countertop space. Now check this out. You have extra countertop space and it even goes so far as it has a little dial at the top and you can dial in the angle of the table. I mean, it's pretty awesome. So as you guys can see, this is the way the table, the seat's gonna be in the van. So right behind me is right, this is where the seat's gonna go. So the CRL window is going to be right here. And so when the seat's folded up, it, it's really only... It's 12 inches. So this right here is just 12 inches wide. So when it's flipped up, it's only sticking out 12 inches from the window of your van. And now you have this whole entire space right here. So the inside of a Ford Transit is just under six feet um, from where the doors are and the bottom panels, not the bump outs. Obviously, the back goes up to 74 inches wide, but the front's a little under six feet. So minus, you know, a foot and a couple inches, you have, you know, 
four and a half to five feet of usable space in your van and the seat is folded up and out of the way. And not only does this seat flip and fold like it shown right here, but it does have the two three-point harnesses. And those harnesses make it uh, like very com comfortable for passengers. Uh, you can get in this like leather um, uh, look. And then you can get with the table option. And I think the table option is the coolest thing because when this van gets finished, there's going to be a kitchen galley table behind this seat. So not only, you're going to have that station, this station, and then the actual kitchen and sink behind it. You have a ton of space just to lay out everything you need to, you know, cook in the van or organize or get your gear ready for a, for a trip or a hike. Um, really, really cool. Uh, I don't have this supported on the bottom, so I'm going to take this table off so it doesn't fall over. Guys, you see, you just take it right here, put it in the slot. It has a clip that holds it, locks it in. It just locks it in so it's not rattling, and it's padded. Yeah, so that's the table that the table's padded too, so it doesn't rattle. Okay, back to the video. So if you can see this behind behind here, this was my original plan. I was gonna kind of chop up this kitchen galley that I had before, but instead I'm purchasing um some pre-made units uh, just to expedite the build process um, for this. I will have to adapt for this little bump out that Ford's have that's kind of annoying for the chassis. But anyway, here's the seat. And um, let's see if I actually flip and fold it up. Let's, let's see what we're talking about here. We'll just kind of hang out with Nick <laughs> as he's filming. Uh, there you go. Let me back up. So underneath here, we're going to talk uh, about the mounting plate in just a second. That's one of the more important parts. This mounting plate needs to be put in a location to where you can put all the bolts or as many as possible in here to keep it as get it to be as safe as possible. Um, and then using grade eight hardware, which is automotive grade hardware, these bolts like the one right over here on my left. Um, but what you want to do is I have it on a temporary board right now. So that wooden board right here, that is to hold the seat so I can get this distance between this uh, kitchen galley in the back and the distance between the driver's front seat. However, since I'm so tight with the layout, you will have to move the driver's seat forward in order to fold the seat up and out of the way. But then you can pull it back and have full use of the driver's seat with the seat folded up. Um, so right here, I'm just showing you the distance between the driver's seat and this seat. And it's really challenging because it's not really where you want the seat as far as the inside layout. In a minute, we're going to go underneath the van, and I'm going to show you why this location is pretty much the only place it could be, uh, it could exist. And that has to do with uh, the cross members going underneath the unibody as well as other uh, structural members of the van chassis itself. So let's see here. But yeah, this is a good shot. So see how close it is to the wall? You really regain all that space. And over here on the left, you see a kitchen galley that's about 24 inches deep. And look how much more space you have now that the seat's flipped up and fold, folded out of the way. Um, let's see. Okay, here's a shot. So 
So here's a shot um, showing how we have a kitchen galley over here on the left, and then we have the table on the right. So you see, you can use two locations to uh, you know prep your prep your food or whatever you want to do. Um, essentially, like a little standing desk if you want to stand up and work. But it's just a pretty cool feature on the table, I think. So that is that bed in the back. We'll talk about that on another live stream. Uh, that is the uh, Adventure Wagon compatible Flatline Vedco Vanco adjustable bed system. So we'll talk about that in the future. Um, yep, and then you just take the seat when you want to use it. You fold it down. It locks in. It actually has a lock to lock it into place when you're driving if you do have it folded up so it doesn't rattle. Okay, let me find the next video here. Okay, this next one we're going to talk about or show you how this plate is laid out. So I'm going to draw from back behind this bolt. Behind this front bolt is a cross member. And so I'm basically just drawing a dashed line to show you the beginning of the cross member. And that cross member goes from, he cross member goes from here all the way back to here. So these two nuts straddle that cross member. And we're actually going to go underneath the van and show you what it looks like too. So you got this beam going through here. So really, you can't go forward or back. That is where you're going to go. You can only go left to right. So I moved this front one as back as far as possible to give as much clearance to the driver's seat as I could. And that's kind of where it landed. And then as we go further back, there's actually another cross member. Uh, this is not so substantial. It's kind of like a fin that was uh, spot welded underneath the van, but it's still in the way um, of this being adjusted to any other position. So when you're putting a seat like this in your van, you're just going to have to take into consideration a a, all kinds of things. I always tell you guys in these live streams or just van building in general, everything inside your van build-wise is connected. If the fridge is over here, it's going to affect the bed system over here. I mean, just everything touches each other and it's it's almost like it's one unit even though it's made up of multiple different units so when you're doing this just take your time do not rush rush you don't want to drill holes the bottom of your van um, same with like vent fans on your roof you know take a time i took about two days to sleep on this and make sure that i wanted to put the seat here i was committed it was going to be in a safe location um so on and so forth. All right, so what I did is I've marked everything out and I'm just double checking that this is where I want it to be. You can see I've already drilled holes through here. So, and these bolts are going through here. These are half inch grade eight bolts. So there's automotive grade bolts. Um, uh, very, very important that grade eight is the bare minimum that you're gonna use to bolt this seat down. Uh, technically, for the front seats of the vans, the front seats, passenger and driver, only have four mounting bolts. Um, this plate actually has 10 mounting locations. So, uh, pretty good. Pretty happy with that. All right, so let's see here. Um, again, look how much space that you get to have by just having that flip and fold seat. It's really, really cool. Now, let me see if this is the video that, okay, here we go. The next thing you want to do uh, after you've got the seat temporarily, temporarily mounted is you're going to want to go through and trace around the seat. Now, this is only going to be for reference when you go to, uh, um, just use it as a reference so when the seat is removed, 
if you're using if you're putting the floor system in or something, you need a visual reference of exactly where that location is. Uh, say you're running an electrical wire under the floor or something like that, you'll know where the seat is. Okay, so next one, let's go underneath the van. All right, so we're taking a trip underneath the van to show you how complicated this is. I'm not saying you you can't do it, but I want to show you that it is slightly complicated. So the bolt you're looking at right here, this is the first bolt. So you kind of think of the bottom right here where my cursor is. This is the driver's side window. And then up here is moving towards the passenger. So it's opposite. So these uh, fender washers that I'm using underneath here to provide more surface area contact of the bolt are when the nut goes on. Uh, I've measured everything out to where that these would fit perfectly, uh, just barely grazing the cross member. Okay, these are the first two bolts of the um, seat. So you can see, we go, we have the, the, these two right here in the front, and then we have these two bolts right here in the back. Uh, so let me go back and pause it. There we go. Go step by step here. Okay, so we got these, there's the second two bolts. These are the, th the third row. Then we had that mem mem cross member that was still messing with us. And then now we have the back. So really, I mean, there's no other place to locate this seat with the pre drilled holes other than this. And I would not advise drilling additional holes into that plate just for safety's sake. Um, but this is pretty much what we have to work with as far as where these bolts are being mounted into the bottom of the van or the floor of the van. Uh, now, ideally, we would like to have this corrugation right here be where the holes drilled and then the seat bolted. It doesn't make a huge difference, um, but that would be best for like surface area contact of the seat plate. However, since we can't do that, it's, I'm gonna, I wonder if I show you guys. Let's see here. Anyway, this is the bottom of the van. You guys can see kind of what we're working with. Again, you want the seat in a place you can access these. You're not having to drop the gas tank or take off the footstep of the van, that sort of thing. So that's why this location, this is where it ended up. Um, let's see, I think my light goes out. Yeah. <laughs> so my light goes out, and then we end up back here inside. So I've taken the seat out. The seat is extremely heavy, by the way. And then now we have our uh, footprint of where we're going. Now you can see see where the seat has rubbed, where the corrugation is. Um, so that's a good thing. Now we are shimming this seat up in these holes. So we actually actually have two more holes I got to drill. Um, but it's I'm doing that after the fact. These are hard to access with the seat on. But the uh, so we got ten holes. Grade 8 bolts, so it's extremely strong uh, contact to the van. Extremely strong. But right here, this middle thing that goes up uh, is having us to put spacers. So we're essentially doing it's uh, two, three. I think it's three sixteenths. Um, I think it might be three sixteenths worth of uh, spacing to get that rise that I need. But we want it so when we bolt it down that it is flush to this uh, this corrugation, this little rib right here. And that's going to give us a really safe connection. Now, I only put four bolts in it to do a test fit, and it's, ex it's extremely strong. Uh, but I'm going to put 10 bolts in it because that is the best way to do this. There is a adapter plate if you do... if you So we have these... Um, chassis members coming through here and so that's why I can't use this plate in my particular situation but if you go to uh, Titan Vans DIY 
Go to Titan Vans, TitanDIYKits.com. And if I back up and I go down here, okay, they have this uh, Titan DIY Kits mounting block for foldaway seats. Uh, it's extremely expensive. And uh, I'm just assuming because it's a pre drilled kind of one off plate that it's that's why it's so expensive uh but it's just a plate um so it's 850 bucks i think it's pretty expensive however if you uh if you purchased um if you purchased one of their seats and you wanted to use this uh, maybe you have like a promaster or something like that maybe 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 there's a location to where you could actually use this plate. Um, this is the only plate option I have found on the entire internet. It's called the Fenton uh, adapter plate. And it's specifically for the uh, Bellagio single and double foldway seats by the Friedman Seating Company. Um, maybe we'll look at some install instructions, possibly. Okay. Um, that's not opening up. Maybe a new one. Huh. Okay. Not sure why that doesn't work. Anyway. Um, so that is the only other adapter plate that I have found on the internet. Um, I couldn't use it. So, I uh, went a different route, but if you guys want to use this, that would be my suggestion. All right. Let me get back to... The video. Where was I? Okay, let's talk about safety. Grade 8 bolts, number one. Number two, it needs to be mounted to the... So metal needs to be on metal. So metal on metal. Do not... Get your piece of flooring foam and take your half-inch plywood and then sit the seat on top of it. That is not safe because you're just going to crank down on your bolts. It's going to smush the foam. It's not going to be a safe uh, situation. So to do so, the next step we have to do, I haven't done this yet, so our next step is to go ahead and cut out our uh, template that we have for the base of the seat and cut out that rectangle into the foam and then cut out that rectangle into the base of the floor. So once we do that, we will be, uh, we'll be good to go. And that way the seat kind of sits into the floor. Um, yeah. All right. So we've talked about, that's pretty much the install, you'll see this in a, in some future live streams. What we're going to do now is we're going to go to the websites, check out uh, the products. So we're going to go over here, and we're going to check out um, these websites. So the first one, we're going to go to freemanseating.com, and you're going to look for the three-point fold-away seat, if, if this is the one that you want. Now, they have... Uh, let me zoom out here. So let's look at a couple of pictures. There you go. So they have it in a cloth setup if that's something that you want to do. Um, if you have room and you can move it back enough, uh, you'll have that room to kind of create that dinette space. But I want to use some room behind this for a little bit more storage, fridge access. Here's another view of the seat. Um, when you do install it, if you want to flip it down, it is going to look like something like this, kind of akin to the Storyteller um, Groove Lounge, where you don't have a lot of space to move between the seat and the kitchen. Um, but real world, you will be folding this typically out of the way while you're using it in the inside of your van, unless you have people with you. So you may want to make a consideration when you're installing this to have this space 
uh, maybe a little bit more wide if you needed to get to the fridge in the back, for example. But you guys will see that as this van gets built over the next couple weeks. Uh, the next thing, Suburban Seating and Safety. Their website's a little bit easier to navigate. Um, as you guys can see here, uh, the Bellagio is is the nice one. I have the still nice, but it's called the Go ES Double Three Point. They're not. It's not a huge price difference. You go from three thousand to twenty eight seventy five. Um, really, the only difference is the headrest. Um, and I don't think the Bellagio has a table option. Yeah. So that's why I think this one is. I think this one is the one to get, but you can get different covers. They make all kinds. I mean, you can actually get like a camo slip cover um, for these seats. Um, and then you also can go with, um, so there's a bunch of different ones. So if you guys are on a tight budget, they do have some very, very simple fold away seats down here at the bottom. All right. Keep moving on. We're going to go down to Titan DIY kits. So we've already kind of been here before, but here we have uh, some fixed seating. If you knew that you didn't want the fold away, uh, again, here is the uh, fold away bench. I'm um, showing it a little bit cheaper on their website, but again, I think it's because they, they these are. Uh, I'm not sure if that's because they're being drop shipped um, or whatnot, because I don't think they actually have stock. But don't quote me on that. And they have the mounting plate. And then finally, we have Wilderness Vans. So Wilderness Vans, uh, one of their products is called Broad Arrow. They also have uh, a similar type of window, like an Arctic Turn style window, or Turn Overland. Um, so Broad Arrow, this is kind of seats and windows. I've just I've seen that Broad Arrow name at the van shows. Um, so speaking of van shows, let me pull up a video. Uh, so this is Peter over here from Rover Vans, and he has installed uh, one of those seats into his uh, um, outdoor style setup that he's got, or this uh, uh, adventure series that he's calling it for this uh, particular van. But this seat here... Um, this seat is a is a fixed seat. So if you guys are into fixed seating, this is a really nice one because it actually will fold out into a bed. Um, he doesn't show it here, but this seat will fold out into a bed, flat, and then you can have somebody sleep there. So that's pretty uh, pretty good option. That's kind of why I'm making this video. I want to show you guys options. So if we go back to Wilderness Vans, we can see that this is that seat that he had in the van. Um, and then this is how it lays down flat. So you guys can kind of see, folds out, lays down flat. However, it does not fold out of the way. It just folds flat. Now, with this, uh, I'll just play this little video here. Um, it's got the unique fold-out system. turns into a six-foot bed. I think that's really cool. But it does take up a lot of space, and you can't move it out of the way. Um, and then you do need to have a seat base for the seat. So this would be the seat base you'd purchase. So it looks like a single, and then that's the double. And then you can change the uh, the widths over here. Um, let's see what else. <laughs> All right. So that is the Freeman Seating 3-point flip away uh, fold away seat that we'll be putting in the van behind me with a couple links. So if you guys want to use this to kind of shop around, uh, if you're in the market to get one of these, again, 
Friedman has told me that this specific flip and fold they cannot get for me until the very end of the year. So if you can find some and you're waiting to kind of pull the trigger, it might be a good time to do that. Um, but as you are building your van, if you need some help on finding some parts, go over to vanbuilderhq.com and download our DIY van build cheat sheet. This is going to help you save time and money with curated product list. So there's a list in here, like an Excel sheet, Google Doc, where you can, in a very organized way, look through all the products that I've used over the past three years that have been specifically ordered through Amazon. Stuff that I've needed quickly, stuff that is uh, tools that I really needed to have like the next day or so, uh, everything that is electrical items, tools such as crimpers, um, you know, PEX A, PEX B fittings, all kinds of stuff like that. Check this out. Click download the free cheat sheet. All you gotta do is put your name and email address. It's gonna be sent directly to your inbox and this will help you get a jump start on your DIY build. Having this cheat sheet in your back pocket, I really think it's gonna help you out. And this is also gonna be a living document. So right now it has over 240 curated items on here and products, but over time, we're going to add to this. So the more stuff I get in, more stuff I kind of vet and say, hey, you know, this is something I bought and used. It's going to go on this list. So you'll pretty much have a nice up-to-date list um, if you sign up for this. So go ahead, Van Builder HQ. You want to click on download the free cheat sheet, name and email address, hit download. It'll come right to your inbox. And finally, before we end this stream, let's talk about Odyssey. So Odyssey Custom Vans, that is my professional van converting business. You can go on our website, odysseycustomvans.com. Reach out to me personally. Click on contact, name, email, phone number. And in the message, tell me your story. Tell me why you're getting into the, uh, why you're wanting to do a van build, where you're traveling, uh, kind of what got you into it. Uh, what you dream of doing, you know, are you wanting to do full-time van life? Are you wanting to get out there, uh, just do weekender trips? Um, all that stuff, happy to set up a phone consultation with you. We'll set up, we'll talk through your ideas and uh, put something together for you. So reach out to me here, odysseycustomvans.com. Click on the contact form, fill it out, and I look forward to uh, talking to you soon. All right, guys, that's going to do it for our live stream today. If you guys have any questions, we are going to be, uh, if any questions, put those in the comments below. But tomorrow, we are going to be doing window install. We're going to be going over uh, the window install that I did with the CRL T-Vent window. So that right behind me. Uh, so just a little sneak peek. If... Uh, if you guys have any questions, I'm going to be on here for about two more minutes. So put those in the chat, and I'll quickly answer them before I end the live stream. So about two more minutes left. But tomorrow, we're going to talk about this guy. <laughs> this was interesting. The reason this will be an interesting live stream is this window, uh, this is the Adventure Wagon system. And typically, this part right here is a blank upholstered panel. There is no window. Typically, the windows are only in the back for ventilation. However, I like a lot of light in the vans, being able to get the van to breathe and vent. This window in particular goes right here, obviously. You can buy a molded bump out from Adventure Wagon, so that's what I bought. However, after cutting this out, there, it, I thought it was going to sit an inch uh, flush and I was going to put the CRL window directly over it and smash it, smush it between the window and the frame. So what we'll talk about tomorrow is my solution to fixing the gap, the inch and a quarter gap that I have between the sheet metal of the van on the exterior and the plastic on the interior of the van. It's not a big deal. But aesthetically, it bothers me. And I've came up with a solution to fix it. 
Uh, I made a bunch of templates and created my own custom trim piece to go over it. And this is what it looks like. So this right here, we'll be talking about how I made this. This looks very simple. It's just uh, eighth inch plywood, or I'm sorry, quarter inch plywood. And it looks like it's something I bought and I didn't. I made it and then I painted it. Uh, but to get to this professional of a finish with the contours and everything, um, it's a little bit of a pain, so instead of you going through that same pain tomorrow, we're going to talk about how I made this template to solve covering this uh, window gap that I have. There's no gap. It's just the transition between the plastic and the trim ring of the CRL window. So uh hope to see you guys there tomorrow for the live stream. Um, I'm leaving in the afternoon, so the live stream is probably going to be closer to after lunchtime. But yeah, if you guys have any questions about window, T-Vent window installs and trim, we're going to go over that tomorrow in tomorrow's live stream. So we hope to see you there. Again, guys, thanks so much for watching the live stream today. If you have any questions, put those in the comments below, and we'll see you on our next live stream.